All right, welcome back. It feels like forever since I've done a mailbag. I know that's not the case, but it feels like it. So we're going to go ahead and respond to some questions and comments. Beginning with, would appreciate it if you made a video about why modern women seem so turned off by good guys. Well, I'll let someone else answer that. Melinda writes, that is BS being spread by men online who claim they are good guys. More like women are turned off by men who claim to be a good guy, but really aren't. That usually comes out later on, in my experience anyways. Yeah, the intentions of the so-called white knights are anything but pure most times. And I hate to put things in terms of beta and alpha males, because those terms are so cliche at this point. So I only use it to get the idea across. The self-proclaimed good guys are usually beta males who are broadcasting incongruency. Okay, we just had the lesson on congruency. It's classic head versus heart. In their head, they're acting like they don't want the girl, but they're also broadcasting with their heart that they desire the girl. Women can pick up on this incongruency, which in turn makes you kind of creepy because you're not in alignment. Look, if you really want a specific girl to take interest in you, stop fawning over her and ignore her. (laughs) In my experience, anytime I've chased, they've ran, and anytime I've ignored them, they've come running. A couple decades ago plus, one of my friend's sister was this smoking hot little redhead, and all of our friends wanted this girl. But I decided from the start, nope, that's my friend's sister, I'm just going to ignore her. That made it worse. Because then she starts wondering why everybody's giving her attention except for old Freighter. So now she's infatuated. The things she would do to try to get my attention, too. And I wouldn't even so much as look at her. I mean, sometimes I would respond if she asked me a direct question. But most of the time, I wouldn't even shoot her a glance. I'd go over to my friend's house, and as soon as I'd walk in the door, she'd try to get me to go with her to a party. You know, just me, nobody else. And as tempted as I was, I declined. Every time. And then she would bring this guy over, who I guess was her boyfriend. I didn't inquire, but then would say the crudest stuff to me in front of him, to where everyone just cringed. Like, oh, Freighter, you should eat me. And everyone's like, what? And the boyfriend's like, yeah, what? And that's the mild version of what she said. And that's just one story. The one I completely shut down. There are others. The point is, if you've taken on that quote-unquote good guy persona, and you're still shooting her glances across the room, she's going to pick up on that. That's not ignoring. You need to be completely indifferent. If you're going to be around a girl who you like all the time, you're going to see her quite often, she's going to be around, just ignore her. Even if you're interested, act like you aren't. Your indifference to her will make her curious about you. Now, the story I just told you, I didn't mean to do that. That was an unintended consequence. I really didn't want anything to do with her, but by ignoring her, she became infatuated. This is about when I started catching on to this. Had I been just like all the other guys, trying to be nice guys or fawning over her, she wouldn't have wanted anything to do with me. Or just be direct in your intentions. The difference between a good guy and the bad guy is the bad guy don't care. He's not attached to the result. And that's something that we've gone over a hundred times in magic. You got to get your mind off of it for things to happen and let go of those expectations. And I appreciate the question. And speaking of infatuation, we got another message from someone here who is in a situation they've been struggling with. They met this guy, but unfortunately he chose someone else. And ever since then, that guy has been on their mind. And they say that they feel like they're under a spell. Well, yes, that's the spell of infatuation. That's obsession. You may remember that we defined an obsession as the inability to get your mind off of something. You can't stop thinking about it, whatever it is. You're obsessed with it, and it is like a spell. Getting rid of the obsession, you want to do sigil magic and or the soap ritual from the fire and water program. Not for the person, not for the guy, for the obsession. Okay, we don't want any unintended consequences happening to the person. So you'll want to do that for the obsession itself. Typically, it's the good guys from the previous question who get the obsessions. They put the girl up on the pedestal when she should not be up there. 
with obsessions, you're more infatuated with the idea of someone than that person themselves. You love the idea of the person, but then if you really got to know them, they most likely won't live up to that idea. And I appreciate you writing in. Thanks. Spiderling writes, wow, now I know what's wrong with me. I have a Pisces rising too. I can't stick to anything. I feel like I'm only half good at everything. I haven't found that thing that is stuck yet. It's incredibly frustrating at times because I can only focus on one thing. Yeah, you're going to have to narrow it down and specialize. Pisces hates being tied down to any one thing. They want to do it all. But when you do that, you're a jack of all trades, master of none. If you just settled down and specialized in something, you could quite easily be a master at that thing. Because Pisces has natural talent across the board. But that talent is spread thin. It's good. It's just not great because you haven't jumped in with both feet. And thanks for writing in. Have you ever tried to invoke Jesus before? I'm not even Christian. I'm just curious if that's possible and what the results may be. Well, people invoke Jesus all the time. People are always calling upon Jesus. But as for me personally, not by that name, I have invoked Yeheshua several times. You'll certainly call upon him during the Rose Cross ritual. There's also been a few rites with Emmanuel, but I don't call upon the name Jesus. If you were to get the repeated message, no water, what would your course of action be? Well, I guess that depends on the question. If you're saying, if I just had a repeated message pop into my head from the subconscious saying, no water, no water, I would probably drink more water because maybe it's telling me I don't have enough water. Either that or stock up on some bottled water. So I guess it just depends on what the context is. As I began to walk the middle path, I found that I actually lost a few friends because of it. Exactly as you said, they saw that I was in the middle and thought that meant I was against them or the antagonist in a way. I feel like there's a lot of misunderstanding towards me because of it. One thing I knew about them was that they were a bit extremist, so I'm not surprised this happened. Yeah, it happens. I just had this fool delete me off Facebook that I've known since grade school. Now, we didn't hang out or anything, so we weren't really close, but I knew him throughout my school years, and he typically wouldn't interact with anything that I would post, that is, regularly. He would just post every now and then, but it would always be an attack or some kind of insult. And, you know, I called him out on it and asked him why he's always doing that. The thing is, people don't like you calling them out on their BS. So he got all defensive. Well, I was just joking. To which I asked why are the butt of his jokes always the person that he's telling the joke to? Because that's not a joke. That's an insult disguised as a joke. And then he deleted me. <laughs> people tend to weird out when you cast a light on the things that they do and then ask them why they do it. And the longer they've been doing it, the more they'll defend it also. This guy's been the same way since school. So don't sweat it if you get people to take out the trash for you. You're far better off without that in your life anyway. The middle's not a bad place to be because you can remain objective and level-headed about things. See things as they are. And I appreciate the question. Quick shout-outs to the top patrons over at Patreon Subscribestar. Ahmad Rashid, Andrew Baucamp, Bardan, Gene Metz, Howard Wolf. Yadiva Montalegra, Jeff Montes, Jordy, Joseph German, Justin Sanders, Liam Niedrich Jr., Madison, Matthew Della Garza, Nexus Voss, Dick Giacara, Rene Bassigny, Starseed Brian, Justin Mai, Kevin Johnson, and a few others who do not wish to be named. Thank you so much for your patronage and support of this channel. You guys are truly the best. And that is it for today. This will be the final recording of the year 2022. I want to thank you all for writing in. I will be using the extended holiday break to work on the new computer and catch up on emails and a few other things that I've gotten behind on. So please have patience if I haven't gotten back to you yet. This is Frater Xavier signing off for 2022 and for 10 years on YouTube. I wish you all the best in the coming new year. And I'll see you then. Take care.